Well, good morning, everyone. It's me, KP, and I'm here in my studio, the Moon and the Maker, headquarters of Rubber Moon Art Stamps, and we're here for day number six of World Watercolor Month. So as you know, July is Watercolor Month, and we're super excited to celebrate it here at Rubber Moon. We're splashing our stamps with core watercolor. So for those of you who are new to joining my my live streams here on YouTube. Um, welcome. I'm super excited to be here. You may or may not know that I have hosted lots of lives on Facebook, but um, never made the switch over to YouTube until recently. And I'm super excited to be here. Um, love the format so far. Uh, love the clarity of the picture. And it seems like most everyone is really liking it over here. So um, that's a good thing. Um, so we're going to just jump right in. It's 11.01. We're going to get started. Um, and of course, I'm going to just go through the whole uh, project painting. And then at the end, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, again, we are using a small format, three by four inch watercolor paper. It's hot press, or I'm so sorry, cold press, cold press. It has a nice little tooth to it and it's 300 pounds. So it's nice and heavy. If you can see that thickness of that. So um, I'm just, I decided on this format just because it's really manageable and I thought it would be a, a great size, um, not only for camera, but just, you know, manageability. We are using mostly all core watercolors. I do have some here in a half pan little mini set and then I have some that are from a tube and they are squeezed out here into my little palette and can be easily reconstituted with water. I'm using a few different brushes here. I have a long round number eight, a long round number four. You can see that both of those come to a really nice point. And then I'm also using just a flat wash brush. Um, this is a number 12. Oh, I'd say about, oh, a little, I don't know, bigger than, oh, maybe about a half an inch wide. And I use that for painting on my stamps. So today I thought we'd do something a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> we are going to be using stamp track stamps and for those of you who are not familiar with stamp tracks um these are the two main collections um, that i came out with these i designed a few years ago and we've come out with a few sets we have the original stamp track set which is 33 abstract just um sort of organic image stamps and then we came out with stamp tracks number two a few months later, just some more shapes and things that all are interactive and work together. And I want to show you today how to watercolor these. Okay, so super fun. We have a couple other smaller sets as well. So I will be just using a few from each of the collections. So we're going to have a little bit longer of a lesson today because I'm doing multiple images because I want to show you um, how fun and exciting these stamps are. And I have not really ever watercolored them this way. So I'm still, even though these stamps have been out for a while, I'm still learning and playing and experimenting with them. So I really do love them. I'm trying to find one other sample that I made to share with you. Of course, I thought I had it here, and I probably do, but it's my studio is way too clean. <laughs> well, I don't know where I put it right now. I'll find it hopefully later and share that with you. Um, let's see. Goodness gracious. Here I thought I was being so, so organized. I am pretty organized, I have to say. But um, honestly, I would have gathered it before I started my live, except for I thought I had everything. And then I just realized, oh, I could show them this other sample. Well, I can't find it, so it's okay. We'll just go with this one for now. And I'll show you how I, um, you know, manipulate that. Some of you may have already seen it. So this is just using 
a few of the stamp strips. Okay, we're using this Dream Maker stamp right here. We're going to use this large surround. It's just this uh, circle. We're going to be using this, and I have a mixture of wood mounted and cling. We're going to be using this effer effervescent stamp, which is this one right here. And then this little dot, which um, is called Dot Maker, and it's just these little row of tiny, again, organic sort of marks. Burst, which many of you know is one of my all-time favorites. We're using this other circle. It's called Round Tangle. And finally, this Sorta Scalloped. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stamps, all from Stamp Strikes 1 collection. Oh, hey, Jan, I am here, and I just saw your message. Thank you so much. Um, I, you know what, that is, I appreciate it so much, um, but I keep mine on my table all the time, and um, goodness gracious, I really think you could sell it, you know, so you should try to put it up even in the Moon Mail group or something, or on Let's Get Mickey Premium. Somebody there will buy it from you, um, because I just can't t have more than one. It's it's so big. Um you know, I almost think it's a little bit too big, but it'll be great if I decide I want to paint larger. So I don't want to get rid of mine, but I can't use another one. But I, I appreciate that you want to give it to me because I know it wasn't cheap. They're beautiful. I wonder how come you don't use it anymore. Anyway, all right. Excuse the interruption, but um, I I saw Janice, Janice's comment and we're the only ones here right now. <laughs> so I thought I could just chat with you a minute. All right. So. Um, well, anyway, I pulled out those seven stamps, and we're going to use those to create this imagery. And I know it's kind of similar, you know, to the one I created on day one, but they'd be great companion pieces. But I also want to show you and share with you how you can manipulate this and really change it up so we could even make it into a sun if we wanted, or I can definitely give it open eyes. I decided to make it more of a sleeping moon, but, you know, so many different ways that you can change that up. And we're going to talk about that as I work with it. But I also wanted to show you these because... I pulled in just a couple other stamps. I've been I'm playing this morning. So I in this basket, I have um, a few from uh, sets one and two, I believe. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stamps, plus um, a couple of these ones over here. So say uh, 10 or 11 stamps, and I was able to create these pieces as well. So all three of these are created with the stamp tracks and watercolor. So I don't think I'll do all three of them for you today. We'll probably do one of the critters tomorrow um, for our World Watercolor Day tomorrow. But um, I do want to show you at least a couple of these because super, super fun to play with. All right, so we're going to start with our Celestial. And again, I do have my paper here all pre-cut. And as we've done every other day, I'm going to go ahead. And of course, if you feel more comfortable using a, an acrylic mount, you can do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I say ink up my stamps, but I don't really mean ink, I mean paint. And so I'm grabbing my flat shader and a little bit of my phthalo blue, and I'm going to paint this stamp up again, not too watery of a brush, okay? And um, I'm going to avoid those little dots on the side because I don't want them. And you can see here, I stamped this over to the, more to the left side. This one I think I'm going to, hmm, we'll stamp a little more over to the right. And it has a little bit different of an angle. That's okay. I'm not going to try to copy this one um, completely. I'm going to do very similar, but I want to just show you how it can easily and so much fun to change it up. Um, I'm going ahead and painting this large surround stamp again. And I do want to sort of just outline My moon face does not matter that if it inked up very well or not. And <clears throat> I'm just going to continue on that way using my stamps and paint like every other day just to get my base, my sort of base layer and my, my guidelines. I don't really want to call them outlines. I'm going to call them guidelines. I did a nice little 
quinacridone magenta right there. Again, I don't know if I've mentioned this to you, but if you want to clean the watercolor off of your stamps, a baby wipe works really well. Much easier to clean watercolor off of your stamps than it is to clean the acrylics off. The one thing that you do need to be careful of is that it does have a tendency to get on your fingers and then you go to touch um, your paper and you get, you know, little smudges and things like that. Excuse me really quick. I seem to have a very tiny spider on my table right now and I want to try to not kill him, but I don't want him there. Okay, so sorry about that. <laughs> little friendly interruption. All right, so we're going to just keep stamping up here. Um, I'm going to take this is another one of my little favorites, this little um, effervescent stamp. And I'm going to dip into a little bit of this dioxazine purple. Back into my fellow blue. Now I only want a portion of the stamp really. So just stamp off right here. This is called round tangle. And I think I'm gonna stamp this one in this beautiful green gold. And again, not really trying to copy myself, but I do, you know, I want to keep it a little cohesive so you can kind of follow along, but um, I want to make the face different so that you can see how I manipulated the face um, to make it my own. Again, I design stamps a lot of times so that you can take the base imagery and just turn it into your very own creation with just a little bit of effort. So I'm going, you know, I could either start in the face, um, which I think I'll do just for now, um, or I could easily start with, um, you know, the outer the outer, the galaxy, if you will. I don't know. <laughs> the sky. All right. So as you can see, this is sort of a face. I designed this um, so that you could easily turn this into, you could use it as is, or you could easily just with a few little strokes, a little bit of color, you know, really turn it into something that's more your own. So just sort of, again, some little guidelines. So I'm going to give this side of the nose just a little dark nostril and maybe a little swoosh underneath to kind of connect the nose and give a little bit of value up underneath it. <clears throat> again, using a really watery brush to go into the eyes now this on this one as you can see I left the eyes kind of closed or not kind of closed they are closed but for this one I'm going to go ahead and dip into my Payne's gray and the nice thing is is that you can just with a couple little lines and dots you can make that the eyes look to whichever side that you want it to to look you can make it look up or down I think I have a couple other samples I can pull out and show you when we're done I hope you can see okay. I'm I'm zoomed in pretty much as far as I can go, but I'll hold it up for you just for a sec. Give just a little pupil and I'm putting it so that it kind of looks more over to the left. If you want to play and experiment with something like this, then I suggest that you just take a piece of scratch paper, maybe a piece of printer paper, and just stamp it a whole bunch of times and then just put the eyes in different places. I am going to grab a couple other samples real quick um, and show you. Goodness, I moved everything around in my studio, so now I can't find anything. I thought I knew right where they are. Uh, I might have to come back. 
Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to come back on or just post pictures because I thought I could see them from my seat, but <laughs> I must have moved them. I I do that a lot. Goodness, and the memory just ain't what it used to be. <laughs> All right, so now I have a wet clean brush and um, I am just pulling a little bit of that color from the eyelid, from that top line. And I'm just gonna give her a little eyelid by using a tiny bit of wash. And I am using my number four brush, so it's pretty, pretty small. Can get in some little detail. And again, remember all that paint will reactivate. So I'm just using water right now and I'm pulling some of that color around for some shading. And now I want some cheek color. I am staying with the blue, but I want to go almost up to the eye. This will help sort of define the eye. Leaving the whites of the eye. And can you see how it's kind of starting to come together? Very light washes, but you can see the eyes are starting to get um, some definition. I'm going to do the same thing with the lips now. I'm going to take a dark color again. I'm just sticking with my phthalo blue, and I'm going to give just a little top lip here. and a little sort of half C or a U for, uh, for the bottom lip. And I like to leave the bottom lip sort of open, a little bit of white space because that's the highlight would be, would fall to the bottom lip. And I got a little smushy there, so I can, I'll go ahead and blot a little too much water so I'm going to just blot that and then I'm going to let it dry and I'll go back and redefine it again after it's completely dry okay I'm going to go up here to the above the eye I'm hoping that it's dry enough and I'm just going to give a little eyebrow and of course you can give any kind of eyebrow you want you want a thick dark eyebrow you want a little slanted small skinny eyebrow whatever you want you know you can give it Frida eyebrows if you want that would be another thing if you just stamped a whole bunch of this image out, or maybe you don't have the stamp or don't want the stamp. Maybe you want to just draw a whole bunch of, you know, faces on a piece of paper and then just practice different eyebrows and different mouths and eyes and all that fun stuff. Now I'm just going to continue building up the values a little bit. All right, and then voila, the face inside is pretty much done. I'll go back and may, may, maybe give her a little more cheek and obviously fix that bottom lip. But you can see definitely the difference between the two faces and how different just a few little, you know, tweaks of um, the brush and a few, you know, uh, placed, well-placed dots or lines really can make a difference. So I'm just going to continue on and... Um, Keep coloring in, and again, I'll come back to that mouth much later. I really want to give it a good chance to dry. So for now, again, just a little clean, fresh water. I'm going to start smushing and manipulating some of that color around. Mm -hmm. 
Remember if you put some water down and then go in with your, you know, with your paint, a lot of the work will get done for you because it'll just spread so nicely as long as you place the water where you want it. certain areas where I know for sure that I want very deep dark value then I'll just go in with a loaded brush and that will help you know make my work a little easier I don't know if you can see this it's very subtle but here where I have a very light wash of blue of that fallow blue and I go right over and up to that where I put that purple those little dots it will spread just a little bit and make a beautiful little color combination I, that got a little too wet, obviously, but it kind of worked in my favor. I like what it did, so I'm going to, you know, just go with it. But in the future, I would just, of course, want to try to be careful and avoid laying down a lot of paint where I have a lot of wet paper because a lot of times I don't want it to spread out like that. <clears throat> but every now and then, you know, it's okay. You get a happy accident. And mixing my colors, this phthalo blue and the quinacridone magenta make a beautiful purple also. So I like to sort of let them just mix on the paper. I have some green gold here. I'm going to deepen this planet. That green gold is a really strong color, so if you don't want it to be somewhere, you need to make sure that your brush is really cleaned out because sometimes um, it works out wonderfully and sometimes it's like, ah, I didn't really want that bright, strong yellow there. Of course, I'm glad it, it's working out okay <laughs> since I'm on camera. It's always nice when, um, I mean, I don't mind showing you my mistakes too, of course. I I think that's a challenge all in itself and being able to show you how I fix mistakes, but it's, um, I won't lie, it's pretty nice to have things come out right <laughs> when you're live. Deepening the values, and remember, you can always do things like save your whites by kind of staying away from, from the lines. Remember these, like this line here was stamped in this thalo blue, so I like to try to meet my same value at the outline and then it looks like it's painted in and not just stamped on there. I hope that makes sense. I'm just trying to create values that are the same in, in darkness and depth so that it looks more part of the composition rather than just stamped on there. <clears throat> and then you can stitch your gradients together by adding little bits of just fresh clean water but it's really cool because since we're doing like an outer space scene all those little fun sort of blossoms and things that happen on the paper are all acceptable because you know you might see all sorts of I don't know smoky wispy I don't know, dots and clouds and different things that go on out in the universe.
sort of mixing my colors a little bit, making some little unexpected sort of color combinations. I really like magenta or pink, um, opera pink, and the the um, green gold. Does it seem like it would be a natural combination, but I really like it. All right, I'm gonna try to work on her lips a little bit. She looks not that happy. <laughs> she looks kind of grumpy, got a grumpy moon. So we'll see if I can fix that up a little bit with sort of manipulating the lines of her mouth just a little bit. Maybe your eyes too need a little uplifting. And she looks a little happier. <laughs> just hopefully you could see just a couple little lines to upturn the mouth just a little. And I do want to give her a little nice cheek color, even though the moon probably would not have pink cheeks, but in my universe she does. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna put a little this magenta on the back side of her to sort of make it pop out just a little bit more and sort of deepen the, the values again, but with a different hue. All right, <clears throat> and then I'm going to, I would let this dry just a little bit more, but I'm gonna take my burst stamp and or my little dot maker stamp, and I'm going to use a variety of, um, a combination of between white gouache or my titanium white, but I happen to have my white gouache just right here. So I'm gonna use some white gouache, and preferably wear, um, things are dry already because if I put it in spots that are wet, it might get it will give a neat look, but it'll mostly disappear. So I want to try to get some of these dots. And if they smear, if it's kind of wet, then that's okay. Um, I don't mind. And again, I know you've seen me sometimes you can even paint them out if you don't want, uh, you know, for one thing, if you don't want it to look like it's just been stamped on there multiple times. Um, you can sort of wipe away some of the dots and that way it'll make it look a little less uniform. But I love that it sort of just gives that beautiful sort of atmospheric look. And then also um, I take my little dot maker stamp like this one and maybe some of the dark fellow blue again, or maybe some of the daxazine purple, or maybe a little mixture, and then just give her a few added bits of texture. And 
And voila, stamp tracks. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Well, a lot of people jumped on here while I was busy, so I want to say hello to everyone and welcome. Thanks for joining me again for World Watercolor Month, day number six. Um, super excited to be here. Hope you're enjoying it. And I hope that you're learning a thing or two and that you're getting to get Makey every day in July. Right now, I'm just sort of smushing away a little bit of some of the white dots that I laid down. And I can call that a day. I have some really cute sayings that would look good right here, or I could easily stamp or paint in some stars. You know, whatever. I think these would be really cute. Even just, you know, frame together. Like you could make a little... Uh, diptych or triptych, whatever you want. So that is um, doing some fun sort of celestial work using your stamp tracks. Um, let's go ahead and pull out one of these babies. Um, you know what? We'll do the owl tomorrow maybe. Let's do this kitty. I hadn't done a kitty before, so I want to show you pretty easily and quickly. I know, um, you know, many of you may not be able to stick around. I'm sorry for the long lesson today, but I get excited and I thought it would be fun to show you two, a twofer today. Um, got a few different stamps here. I am using, for this one, <clears throat> I'm using this Large Tracks, which is this. I'm going to use this. Um, and this, again, is from one, from Stamp Track Set 1, and it's called Zero. It's this one here. I'm also going to use this from Stamp Tracks 1, and it's called Line Work, and it's the larger one. We have a large line work and a small line work. This is the larger line work. I'm also using this one from number 2, Stamp Tracks 2. It's called Dot Your Eye. It's this one right here. I'm also using this triangle stamp here. It's called Try It. And then I'm using, um, let's see, I think, oh, I'm going to use Burst again, my old standby. And then last but not least, I am using, uh, oh, yeah, this one. So it's called What's Inside, and it's this. And I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to use it in a different way. I'm only using it for two of the lines. I'm not using it in its entirety. And then I have, I'm going to cheat right now. I have this little line. I am not sure where it's from. <laughs> I um, have so many different, it's not on Stamp Tracks 1 or 2. But of course, you don't, you can, you, you don't have to stamp your line. I just found it in the box. I'm pretty sure this is from my Wire and Beads collection. Um, and all it is is a small little like one inch line. Of course, you can just use a pen or a marker. You definitely don't have to use a stamp. I like to just because I like the consistency of line, but it's definitely not a necessity. All right, so I'm taking my Try It stamp and I'm going to paint it up. Again, we're always pretty much starting the same way, just inking. And I say inking, but I mean painting our stamps um, with a little bit of watercolor. And I'm using an orange, and I'm just, I just painted the top of the triangle. I did not paint that bottom line. And I'm going to stamp it twice like that. And then going to take my zero stamp. And I'm painting it with a little Payne's gray. And again, I'm going to stamp it twice. I'm now taking my little dot your eye stamp. It's the little tiny stamp that has a, a polka dot with a circle around it. And again, all these are organic shapes. So none of them are perfectly like symmetrical or anything like that. These are I hand drew each one of these. So even the consistency of line may be a little bit different. I'm painting this one up with a little bit of green gold. Oh, oh, good. I didn't, I didn't mess up. 
and I'm stamping it right inside my zero. And I accidentally, it was an accident, but they ended up both being over to the side a little bit more, but that's okay. That just means that he'll be looking, um, looking it over. So, oh, I want, I just looked up and I saw my comments, you know, mostly I do not um, answer comments during the live stream, but um, I just looked up and saw you all. And I want to let you know that our sale is extended. So many people wrote and said they were so busy over the weekend and they really wanted to order, but could they still get the discount? And so instead of going back and like having to refund everybody, we extended the sale for two more days. So please go on rubbermoon.com. If you use the code July four, all capitals July, and then the number four, you can still get the 20% off. Yay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So now um, this was dot your eye, which I stamped in the center of both of the zeros. And now I'm going to use the same stamp for the nose. Okay. It doesn't really make an appropriate nose necessarily. Well, I don't know what's inappropriate, but you know what I mean? It doesn't look exactly how I will want it to, but it's good enough. And I'm going to paint that in. Here I have my um, line work stamp. And I'm just going to... Paint up the top of that. Ooh, oh, I keep dropping. Oops. <laughs> oh, is, I'm not. I'm not going to use that because you know what? So many. I have to tell you, so many of mine are dirty and used on the back that they don't stick that well. So I'm kind of crazy to be using that anyway. Um, I don't really have to have a mount. I'm going to stamp that here and there. I am now going to use my. Um, long large tracks and a little bit of this teal color Come all the way across actually I really shouldn't have gone all the way across I'm gonna just blot that out a little bit um it's not gonna matter because I'm gonna paint it out anyway but that'll just help me um okay so now I have my Oh, my little line stamp that I told you about. And I'm going to use a magenta right on here. And again, if you wanted to just go ahead and use a little pen, you could easily just draw in your line. And that way you could even, I don't know if you saw that. I was able to curve the stamp up just a little bit with my fingers and make give her a little bit more of a smile. So that's a little trick there for your bag of tricks too. Here I have again my burst stamp. I'm going to ink it up just using a little bit of um, phthalo blue, but I don't want the whole thing. So I'm just gonna paint in the center and give a couple little dots right there, his little whisker freckles. All right. And then last but not least, I'm going to use this stamp. Um, and again, you don't have to use a stamp for this. Um, you could easily just draw in your line, but I am going to just use this side. and make my little fat cat. <laughs> then, of course, well, I can go ahead and paint some of this out and maybe I could have done that without even using a line because I wanna go all the way down. I might have to restamp that again. I wanted to go down just a little bit more. I'll just paint that in. It's okay. And you can do that too. You can just paint them in. And that's what I'm going to start doing is just painting in now with my watercolor. 
And I wanted a little orange and white tabby kitty, so. Again, with the little nose, that wasn't the exact shape of the, the nose that I would want, so you can just sort of fill it in however, give them some little nostrils. Whoops. And this is where it's fun just to go ahead and smush around your paint and kind of bring him to life or her. And I want to bring in a little yellow. I think that a little goldy yellow, some Indian yellow would be really nice, or maybe some quinacridone gold or something like that. And actually, it's kind of funny because I think this kitty's turning out cuter than my sample kitty. I might be that little smile. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to go ahead, I'm going to fill in the eyes, and I like them to be that yellowish green color, and then of course I'll have to let them dry before I can add his little pupils, and then we want to do the background, and since I got that up there in the background, I guess I'll choose a different color for coloring in, maybe we'll just go with this magenta. And then last but not least, I really need to um, go ahead and put the pupils in. I don't want to make them run though. So, and I'm gonna put a little bit of dark for the, the little nostril area too. And ta-da, <laughs> isn't that kind of fun? I don't know, they both have a completely different look even though they're done with the exact same stamps. But now you can see the fun that you can have creating with stamp tracks. Woohoo! <laughs>
Anyway, so if you're not into kitties, of course, you could try to make your own dog if you want. And um, tomorrow we'll make an owl. How about that? So um, if you have stamp tracks, get out and play along. And if not, get you some. <laughs> but if not, just play with your watercolors because, you know, it's mostly all about the watercolors. I hope that um, you had an enjoyable day of watercolor month. I loved it. I hope that you come back tomorrow at 11. I'll be here same bat time, same bat channel. Oh, I don't think I'm supposed to say that. That's probably copyrighted. <laughs> same makey time, same makey channel. Um, I, If you have any questions, of course, you can ask me here. I'll stick around for a few minutes <clears throat> and um, answer any questions that you have. And again, if you don't think of it till later, you can always ask me on Facebook or send me a private message or an email, whatever you want. I'm just going to clean my stamps while I look at the comments. Thank you. Thank you, Dana and Becky. Thank you. Always good to see you. Juliet, I love what you've been making. I love what you've been sharing. <clears throat> so, so fun. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Gosh, it's nice to see you. And Joy, it's great to have you here. Tamiko, thank you so much every day for sharing. I really appreciate it. Um, for those of you who are new here, um, we do have a group called Let's Get Manky, and we have a paid group called Let's Get Manky Premium, where I do, if you like this content, I share a minimum of four projects a month. We also have a golden hour, usually once a month, where I share um, all sorts of golden paints and products and different tips and techniques for using all the golden. Because um, I think you may or may not know that I am a certified golden artist and I'm also a certified core artist. So um, on Let's Get Makey Premium, I share a lot of extra things there if you're interested in more content. I uh, also do want to let you know that I appreciate you so much being here. I give this whole month of watercolor freely and um, with, with my gratitude. I do have a donation button if you're interested in donating a small amount or any amount. could be a large amount. <laughs> but um, just to help uh, keep things going so that I can offer more and more free content. But of course, you're not obligated to do that. But it is really appreciated. And if you do make any sort of donation at the end of the month, I will send you an original small watercolor. So you can find that link on rubbermoon.com. If you click on the world watercolor um, header at the top, you can read all about it. So <laughs> Jan, huh? Jan said, I'm just certifiable. Well, I'm that too, <laughs> but I do it with art supplies. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you get to get makey. Put your clothes back on. I said makey <laughs> and have a wonderful day. I will see you back here tomorrow morning, I hope, at 11 a.m. Central. Bye, everyone. Now well, that's pretty fun, right? <laughs> oh, goodness. I think I'm having way too much fun over here. You all have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.